Thank you, Dave. Good evening. Okay, and welcome to sensitivity training. You gonna laugh? <laughs> I love the poorly educated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been thinking about that all day. Have you been thinking about that all day? Yeah, the last week has been insane. In what way? Um, just, just the Republicans are just going up in flames. Oh, some of that stuff. Crazy. I was, um, oh. it's a little, but you know what? Do you think that, do you, do you feel like, I don't know how you feel, but it's different maybe because I'm in like, feel like I'm in the throes of it, but do you feel like this is, um, historic time? Th these are historic times that we're living in. Seriously. Like they'll be writing about this in the history books. Um, like I hope not. Cause I think that, that means something bad is coming. No, but I mean, this is like, I, I swear, to, there must be writers, they're in basements all over the country and they're, they're, they're jotting all this stuff down. Because, I mean, you, you never know when you're making history. It will, um, wait, can I just say, I, you can say whatever you want. Donald Trump was making fun of Rubio's ears and I've been doing that for months. So he stole it from you. Yeah. You're saying that DT stole it from but you. But just also, I'm not running for president. Like, what is he thinking? What is who thinking? Donald Trump. Uh, and also, did you see um, everyone's talking? Everyone's talking about it. John Oliver's take Who's down. Who's John Oliver? He hosts the. Uh, it's what I would love this show to be like. He talks about a few things and then he focuses on one story and goes in depth. How long is his and show? On Sunday, it's a half hour. And he had, probably has producers and he probably has Writers. people who actually want to do stuff behind the scenes. Do you want to do stuff behind the scenes? No. No. Okay then. So moving on, what are we talking? So I'm Diana. You're Dave. What are we talking about tonight? So I think we should talk about your experiences uh, today, um, but also. Um, Thank you for watching us. We're don't turn it to one of the news stations. We're gonna watch the news stations and just tell you. Oh, we are okay. So, so why go directly to the source? Come when to you can come right to us to the middleman. Yeah. Come to the middleman. It's weird. I'm I'm on like on the opposite side, but this is all right. Um, so what would you like me to? Uh, how would you like me to begin this? What talking about today? Yeah. So what did you do today? So. Did you vote? Uh, what, what didn't? What didn't? What didn't you do today? I can't even believe that. I was that. busy. You didn't vote. How did you not vote? No, you. Let's not talk about. It. Let's pretend like I voted. It's too late. <laughs> he said it. So you voted today, and. Uh... So I voted today. So um, I voted in Cambridge, right? Because I recently. Um, moved out, but I'm still kind of, I'm still here. I'm living in my RV. So I voted in Cambridge today. I'm registered in Cambridge and I voted in area four. Um, and then I held a polling sign. Um, for those of you familiar with Cambridge, I held the Donald Trump, um, sign. I actually had a couple because I was waiting for people to come and I was on the corner of Harvard street and prospect. So for those of you who live in the area, you know, it's a busy street because wait, Harvard it, street, what's that? Harvard street. It's, it's, it's like two streets over from where we are here, okay? So the reason I stood there is because there was traffic there. There was really nobody in front of Area 4, which I thought was a big area. Anyway, this was the only place in Cambridge that any, any Trump supporters were. So it started off pretty okay, right? It was beautiful weather. Some people came by. They talked to me. Some people, some people beeped. Um... And then there was some some not so pleasant stuff. Um, oh, at some point I have to get in another uh, fecal matter story. Okay, so I'll go. I guess I'll go quickly. So, so I got some thumbs up, and then I got some thumbs down. <laughs> I got um, one bike rider, a man, came by and said, "Go to hell!" <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. And I'm, and I was thinking, mm, no, I, you know, I, I can't tell you what I was thinking. But anyway, so that's what he did. And then I had um, some uh, gentleman from Medford or Malden or whatever. He was working in the area. So he came by. He was a Trump supporter. He started talking to me. And then, I, honest to God, there was a flock. There were, like, all these high school kids of different um, races and some older people. He was just talking to them. I just turned my back. I just kept doing my thing because I didn't want to get engaged, but just because I was listening. Um, so that was that was pleasant. There was a woman from Mexico, Ana Christine. Um, she said, she came up to me and she said, I don't, I don't agree with um, his, his view or your view, but I really give you a lot of credit. Um, 
for standing up for what you believe in. And she was so sincere. I told her I would remember that for the rest of my life, right? So I felt good though, even though there was some, you know, right? So then I had to take a little break. I had to take a little, you know, get a little something to eat. When I came back, um, I was joined by two other people and we headed off to um, Central Square. But before that, I'm sorry, in front of Whole Foods, we well, just get to the good stuff. Oh, I got, well, we met a Bernie supporter, and he had this beautiful sign. So if you look at my Facebook page or our, our Facebook page, Sensitivity Training, you'll see the Bernie sign. Um, so we get to Central Square. Oh, my God, the gloves came off. I'm shocked. Honest to God. And, and I know that even though you don't agree with me, you still at least are nice to me. I am not kidding you. <laughs> People told me to die. People came in my face. I had this one guy, Joe, after I, uh, he, he, this is what Joe did to me. And then, like, I mean, he came right up to me like this. He was like, <clears throat> and so then he walked away and I went, excuse me, is that considered hate speech? And then he kind of like, I think it, it took him out of his wherever angry place that he was in. And we had a conversation walking up towards Mass Ave, okay? And this was, because this was, this was, yeah, so we had a conversation and he kept saying to people, because I had my signs, I'm not with her, I'm not with her. Then some guy was jogging and he turned direction, came back and he said, I'm not with her. And the guy said, good, I'm not with her either. Um, so Cambridge is... Intolerant. Yeah. Cambridge. Maybe liberal and progressive, but not very... Progressive. Regressive, like how is wow. that progressive? What does progressive mean anyway? I always think of progressive meaning that you're trying to improve on things. Well, like, um, I think progressive people are like, let's improve and let's improve what we want improved, but we don't care what you are like, want. Let's go back improve. to the 1950s when things were great and we could uh, see, sick that, dogs on people. Now, see, that's interesting because. I said that a couple of times that I, I remember when I was growing up, yes, there was some racism, but all of my circle of peeps in school were mostly people of color. That's how you say it today. I had Spanish people, uh, Beatrice from Puerto Rico. I had Alba from Cuba. I had Joanne Powers, who was Spanish. She was born here. How's Joanne doing these days? I haven't seen her, but I saw her at a reunion a couple of years ago. She's doing okay. But I had um, uh, Cecile, Cecilia. I mean, I had a lot of people of color. Wait, can I just say, when, um, so I was watching a Trump rally, a rally in Arkansas over the weekend or something, or I don't know. But um, when and uh, Chris Christie came out and... Uh, he came out? Yeah. Oh, okay. He knew he came out. You mean he came out for Trump? Wait, don't pick apart what I said because you said people came in your face. So. <laughs> I, I know, honestly. I'm still riled up. That's what it did to me. But anyway. But, um, so... So I watched for like 20 minutes and it seemed a lot longer. Um, but he was just... The whole time he just talked about himself, you know, and like... Chris Christie did? No, no, uh, Donald Trump. And um, it's just like he didn't say anything about the country. And it's just really weird that people could sit there and like not laugh at him for like the right reason. But um, what was he? I mean, I didn't I didn't see the whole of that. He was talking about like time. different um, like his different legal issues, like different lawsuits and stuff. And now he never settles and stuff like that. But so I'm just wondering what like a Trump supporter thinks when he says, like, I, you know, I think the direct quote is, um, you know, I went to the Ivy League schools, I went to the best schools, I have the best words. Like, what do you think? I mean, the thing is, I... I and when for, he says... When I he love, says stuff like that... I love the poorly educated. Well, I, I, I take it as um, when he talks about... He, because people are saying you're not qualified. And so then he... This is just my opinion. I don't know. I've never met the man. My opinion is that he, he mentions it because he's saying, yes, I mean, I was educated. I do know business, right? So that's what comes to my mind. I can't speak for the gazillion of people who seem to be supporting him at this point. Like, I, I even through Cambridge... Do you think his supporters will care if his tax return comes out and he's not worth that much and he's not very successful? So, like what? Like, if he's only worth $10 billion and not 11 No, if, um... If he, if he doesn't have any money? No, or what? You mean if he has an EBT card? They might have a problem. Or like with that. no income, or how does he have no income? 
Like, if he, maybe his, like, worth is just, like, assets and stuff, but he doesn't actually, I don't know. But I know on John Oliver, he was saying Who's how... Who's John Oliver? Tell, tell me about him, because I so don't he's know a British this. comedian. He started on The Daily Show, and then, like, a couple years ago, he got his own show on HBO. Um, and so he's, like, a political commentator. He digs into stories about, like, abortion and stuff like that. Um, and it's... Interesting and horrifying. Um, and horrifying? Why is it strokes. horrifying? Tell me. Um, well, so I think... <laughs> so it's his third season. This was his third... That doesn't look good. Show. <laughs> yeah, let's put it in front of you. <laughs> but, um, but so his second show this season was about abortion. And so he talks about the different laws and... Um, you know, the string of states down south, how, like, some of them only, because they are, like, federally required to have a, like, option for abortion, so they'll just have one abortion clinic in, like, the in middle of the entire state, and so it's, They like, make it difficult for yeah, people. Yeah, it's just so difficult, and so this one, like, 13-year-old girl, so they, there was a news program, um, they showed a clip of this woman like nurse or something who couldn't treat this 13 year old uh girl who was a victim of rape because of i forget what the, what the exact problems were something with like i don't know she wasn't covered for something so that was in san antonio texas and so like the closest place she would have to go to get treated is like new mexico or yeah, New Mexico or something. So the woman was basically like just broken and saying like she's not going to be able to get an abortion, and you know she's 13 years old. Like the laws and the right self righteous people down there are like forcing this woman into mother this girl into motherhood at 13, even though it wasn't you know she wasn't irresponsible or anything but um and just so stuff like that and you're just like oh my god you know like like just people i don't know so i do take exception to so um you know uh, i do take exception when they say partial birth or or um what's the thing they were talking about selling baby parts or something isn't that the so here's the thing right if you don't know about something and somebody throws out something like they're selling baby parts right People jump all over that, right? But that, I can't imagine. I did not work at um, in GYN. I never worked in GYN. Um, but from my understanding, it's not like, you know, there, I, I think, and I don't know enough about this to say, but I'm just going to speak for the brief part of what I know. I can only think that, that if they were selling um, anything, it was fetal tissue. And if they were selling it, it was the feed, it was the remnants. It wasn't, it wasn't a heart, it wasn't a lung. Because, and the reason I'm bringing this up is I actually had a conversation with a 57 year old man a couple of days ago about the same thing. And he thought that they were harvesting lungs or something from abortions, like no, or hearts. I'm like, no, it, that's, that's not how that works. If anything, and I don't know, and don't quote me please, Maybe they were doing research on fetal tissue. I don't know. I don't have enough on it, but that, to me, but that's what they, that's what people do, right? They try to put a spin on it. Yeah, but I think a lot of people are just, um, well, actually, no, he showed, um, like a survey a that showed. serious subject tonight. So, like, divided into four categories, like, you love abortion, like, with restrictions, with, like, or once once in a while abortions and like adamantly like against Monday, it. Monday, Tuesday, Friday or something like that? Yeah, and so, but he was just saying how like 89% of people fall into the spectrum where, you know, at least on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's cool to get an abortion and but, you know, but these laws are being dictated by the like 11%, you know, and just- Well, let um, me ask you a question though. If say I am, and I'm not, but say I am a really religious person and I don't believe in it. What do you think about that? Like say I'm really religious, I don't believe, I don't believe in it. I mean, so what, what should happen? I'm just asking, I'm trying to play devil's advocate. Well, I think, um, you know, so I don't really know, but I think laws, shouldn't be determined on Christian faith, you know, they should be determined by intelligent lawmakers and stuff. And right, but what um, if, what, I don't understand, what, what does that mean? 
If you, if you, the thing is, lawmakers make laws based on how they feel, their beliefs, or their their beliefs of their congr congregation, or their beliefs of their yeah, constituency. Yeah, I just think I think how you run a country should be separate from people's religion. Like if. Um, you know, I don't know. If somebody has a ridiculous th th thing in their religion, it shouldn't, you know, their You better laws, be careful where you're stepping there, boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, keep going. Keep going. Get into the mire. Huh? So if they have stuff in their religion, it shouldn't what? It shouldn't get passed on to everybody else? Is that what no, you're saying? No, I think, yeah, I'm saying there are laws and there are religious beliefs, and, uh, yeah, and they're different. Yes, I agree with you. But I think one of the issues is, and I'm just, I'm playing devil's advocate, Planned Parenthood, for example, I think people have, the, people, people get- It's an abortion factory. People get confused. It's not an abortion factory. It's a woman's health center. Well, d who I mean, doesn't know that? Listen, there are people in this world who actually only stay within their little world. And I hope my viewers aren't those people. They only stay in their little world. They maybe just read the Herald. Nothing against the Herald, but they're not reading everything, right? And if you don't know, then you only get what that little tiny little paragraph says. So you like, how would you not know if this if somebody says to you we're selling body parts, what are you gonna think? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, that's a big thing now. They're selling Planned Parenthood was selling body parts, and I don't even know if that was even true. And and body parts or tissue to do studies. I, think, to save I lives. don't even know if it was the latter, but the point is it never would have been body parts. Because when you when you have an abortion, it's it's the, it, what comes out is not a, a, like a whole heart. What are you doing? I'm pulling up the I next have a question. Fecal matters. Okay. I have a question. Woo. Did you miss me? Yeah. I'm just checking. Because the show before you were trying to humanize me. Yeah, last uh, yeah I can't run the so show. So you're gonna do fecal matters, so I, I can't. Yeah, did you watch uh, last week's fecal matters? I did not. You didn't watch. I the didn't. Show? I downloaded the show, but I'm sorry, and I uploaded it, and I'm I'm ashamed to say I didn't have a chance because I've been working on the campaign. Well, last week. I'll watch it tomorrow. No. Uh, no, I wanted to watch it. I did. You looked very nice, by the way. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm feeling flushed. Because uh, I. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. I trashed you throughout the whole show, so you probably did you really? Watch it. No. <laughs> But, um... Did anybody that win that you wanted to win? Because we had the Oscars on the other night. Uh, what would you think of Chris Rock there? Uh, yeah, I thought it was really good. The only thing that I got a little uncomfortable was when he went after, like, Leo. You know, I was like, what did Leo do? Like... He's a you white know. male. White males are not Yeah, but I was like, you know, it's his like night. Open just, season? Isn't know. it open season on white <laughs> But males? also, Leo needs to be a little, a little bit less serious and laugh at himself like a George Clooney would, you know? What did you think about him passing out the Girl Scout cookies and making, making people buy them? Talk about, talk about, like, force feeding them. That was kind of funny. Yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so we, we have to so wait. We have to, we last have to week was a movie star-themed fecal, fecal matters. Matter? And, you know, so this week... So do they really ship diamonds <coughs> and pearls? What? Fecal Matters, you said movie stars. No, it was uh, this tiny little girl who clogged a movie star's toilet. And this one is another little girl, but it's not about her shit, it's about... All right, so, hold on, let me... So the name of this segment is Fecal Matters. This is, actually, this is, fe this is Fecal Matters funny. number two. <laughs> <laughs> so send in your Fecal Matters stories to Dave Tulis CCTV. Dave Tulis. <laughs> no, but it's T-U-L-I-S at C Dave Tulis CCTV at gmail.com. Tom, Tom. Okay. We're gonna wait, so can I talk? Okay, oh, so I was okay. trying to get a story from her, and so she says, so this is a friend and big fan of the show. I do know a college classmate who who blacked out, who, who blackout took a shit in our hotel kitchen. She woke up with no pants, a mound of shit on the floor, and me standing in the doorway in shock. So this, all right, so I guess. Yeah, so can we have some background on this, the please? The background is, this is um, maybe our. Somebody wrote this in, somebody year, sent you this? Yeah, maybe it's a 10 year anniversary or something, like college reunion or something. Okay. 
Okay, so the, so her and a bunch of girls got a hotel room, and I guess guess they got pretty wild. So our entire hotel room smelled like shit. When I went back into the bedroom, I started light, lighting matches, and then paused and turned to the other girls and said, "Oh no, is this rude of me?" <laughs> <laughs> and one girl re replied, "No, anonymous." There is no etiquette for this type no, of No, Dave. <laughs> you talked over the joke. No, Dave. There is no etiquette for this type of situation. This type of situation. <laughs> to this day, none of us know how the girl cleaned it up, but there was no evidence of it the next day. Sparkling clean kitchen. Touche. <laughs> I think she broke into the cleaning closet in the hallway. Um, and so I think that's it. So let Wait, me get this she, straight. Was she not wearing pants? Yeah, you said she wasn't. She woke up with the shit beside her. So here's my question. I thought it was like she woke up with a spider beside her. That was another thing. Itsy bitsy spider thing. So you're telling me that every single week you're going to tell... I thought... I really thought fecal matters was like a name for something that was going to be kind of funny, but not really about shit. But it's really about that. Yeah, it's poop stories. So all about, so you want our viewers, <laughs> our two viewers, <laughs> to, to, share their, to share their poop stories with us? Yeah, um, you know, and so the demographic so far seems to be like 100 pound young girls, but um, who love to talk about that stuff. But I, yeah, it's just, I could make them up myself, but I think real stories always Real have stories a bit. are always better, yeah. Because yeah. you really want to just get into shit like that, right? You yeah. just want to like, okay. I can't believe I had to, I said shit like four or five times. Yeah. So Body how do you- mouth. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Gonna wash it up. Did you ever have your mouth washed out with soap? I was just talking to my mom about that because we were saying how my niece and nephew need it. Um, but you can't do that. I think I did. I think I did too. Dad, I know you're probably watching this show. Did I have my mouth washed out with soap? But it's a choking hazard or something like this? I know, but you know what? Every, every, the kids are so sensitive today. What's a little pepper on a tongue? <laughs> Although some people, that's not good. That's not funny. People have killed kids that way. Like putting a teaspoon or something crazy. Of what? Pepper. You kill them? Yeah, I mean, they choke or whatever. It could be a little kid. You can I gag. Can, I can kill somebody with pepper? Uh, anyway. Anyway. So. My story. I'm going to continue my story in Central Square. I actually was being mocked. For 38%, 40% of the Massachusetts vote, Clinton 51. <laughs> Only 1%, uh, what do they call it? Reporting? Oh, 1%, yeah, 1% um, but I think of the votes in. They already called So where that. is he in Vermont? Kasich is number two. Vermont oh, Kasich is, is number two. at 35%. Sanders won that going away. 88% Sanders. What about Alabama? Clinton won Tennessee oh and gosh, Alabama. Alabama. Whoa, 84%. Did, did you hear that um, they said 20,000 voters <laughs> in Massachusetts switched their party from Democrat to either Republican or Independent? Did you hear that? No. Yeah. Wait, how did Trump, who's anti-immigration, win the Latino vote in Nevada when there are two Latino candidates? So you just said Trump is anti-immigration? That's what you said. Well, yeah, he hates he's he anti, hates Mexicans. No, he's anti illegal immigration. Yeah. There's a difference. But I'm sure like if you were Hispanic you would I wouldn't view Trump as a friend. So know? why do you think they voted for him then in Nevada? I don't know, because they're poorly educated. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I got into a heated discussion. I love the four. There were so many people. There were a lot of people. Oh, so we, I wanted to ask you. We were on Twitter. I was on Twitter. Yeah, I, all so over. You, really? Yeah, how do you I don't check know. it? I because know. I have to tell you, there were so many people taking pictures of us. There was only one negative. There were some schoolgirls, and they were trying to do it behind my back with the thumbs down. And so then I just turned around proudly, and she went thumbs down. And I'm like, three people were taking pictures. But there were people actually saying... Oh my God, they're real. Like real Trump people. Trump people. Oh. This one I was by myself. Or I can't believe it. Like it was almost as if 
there they had like an oil spill or something in Cambridge because they couldn't believe it. Like this is the supposed to be the most tolerant place in the country. And I can't even believe, honestly, people were vile. They were vile, they were vicious. I mean, people were like in my face. And one guy, one lawyer, um, he was calling me a racist. <laughs> um, and then I asked him what he did for a living. He said he was a lawyer. Um, and I said, you know, how public do you defender? like? Yeah, yeah, he was like a public defender. I said, you know, why can't we just have a conversation? And well, you're not going to change my mind. I said, I'm not trying to change change your mind. Then there was another Bernie guy. There was a good Bernie guy, and then there was a not so good Bernie guy. Well, you know Michael Michael Moore, filmmaker. Yeah. Because I heard an interview. Yeah, because you went. Yeah. Yeah. I heard an interview with him recently, and I think his movies are funny and stuff. I haven't seen his last one, but um, he was saying how like he was out in public and this guy walked by him and said asshole and so he said hey come here you know like he was like you don't talk to people like that like you don't know me like have you ever seen one of my movies and the guy was like no and he's like just take two hours like rent it for free blah blah blah, blah. watch it and anyways they ended up talking and the guy was like you know like um Sway, he was sway, but not sway, but just like okay, I shouldn't yell at exactly. Or somebody. Exactly, exactly. And so know. there was another Bernie supporter up. He had a sign, and he like went up to me, racist. And then, so then I ignored him the first time, and then when I was leaving, I walked by. He did it again, and I turned around, and then I heard him say, "Oh, they're coming back." And I said, "Do I know you?" And he said, "No." I said, "Well, I'm Diana. Like, I don't know your name, well, my name, or whatever." And so. You're a racist. I said, you don't even know me. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we started to get into a conversation, and then I started, I challenged him just a tiny bit because I try not to do that when I'm doing that. And then he said, I don't talk to racists. Like, he wouldn't even talk to me at that point. <laughs> so the minute I started to challenge him, the minute I even said, do you know about this? I said, I listed like three things. You know about this, you know about this, you know about this. I don't talk to racists. I don't talk to racists. And then he kept saying, I don't. And then he walked... I'm like, you can call me a racist, you can be nasty, like nasty, in my face. But anyway, we'll see you all next week, right?